Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we once again explore the world of the Mandalorian and relate the recognizable silver armor to the character hidden inside of it. If you do enjoy this video, consider liking and if you haven't already, subscribe for more commentary and standard gameplay if you like that as well. So, let's get into it. An appearance is the first piece of a character that we are given. Even with little development, viewers can remember a character based simply on the individuality or interesting look that they possess. In Star Wars, it all started with the entrance of Darth Vader, with his menacing black cape towering over his troopers and marching towards the fearful rebels. The prequels gave us Darth Maul, Count Dooku, and General Grievous, each with distinct traits that separated the three saber wielders. Maul spoke a total of two lines in The Phantom Menace, but captivated audiences with his red and black horned face and iconic double lightsaber. Dooku displayed his wealth and reserved personality with his formal attire and curved hilt of his blade. General Grievous stood tall as an alien cyborg that donned four arms to wield the weapons that he took from fallen Jedi. The Mandalorian is no exception to this trend, bringing the cuteness of Baby Yoda into the universe and of course, the silent contained protagonist, the Mandalorian. Today we dive deeper into the symbolism of his armor and its evolution during the show. We see Din Djarin entering a bar in the first episode of The Mandalorian. He has a silver helmet, one silver and one brown pauldron, a brown chestplate with a tan underlayer, brown arm guards, three ammo belts in various spots on his figure. His appearance was jumbled and there was no uniformity to its design. The Mandalorian survivors after the fall of the Empire were at their weakest point looking for bounty jobs to provide for their community who, who are barely making it by. Our protagonist is one of the best bounty hunters in the Parsec, and this leads him to get the job to retrieve the child. For this reward, Mando will be given a substantial amount of Veskar, which is used to make Mandalorian armor. During the course of Chapter 2, the Mudhorn that Din Djaro fights destroys most of his chestplate, leaving him needing a new one. Using the Veskar, the armorer repairs his chest piece gives him new weapons and matching silver pauldrons with one donning a mudhorn signet. The Mandalorian as a character has gone through a change as well. Instead of leaving the child to be experimented on by the Empire, he rescues it from them, even though he broke the guild code that he was working under. His growth of empathy is represented by his upgraded armor, strengthening his protection as well as his character. The focus on keeping Harm away from the child and returning Baby Yoda to its kind is displayed in the less sporadic color scheme, with his outfit now mainly brown and silver. As he changes, so does his armor, reflecting a person that we see very little of outside the helmet. The helmet itself is a symbol of the strict Mandalorian code that Din Djarin was raised into following. His group of survivors had a rule to not remove their helmet in front of others, this rule restricts their eating schedule and any possible relationships they might want to have. A highlight of this rule is in Chapter 4 with the woman who is hosting him at the fishing village. All we know about Din Djarin are his actions and the gear that he wears, but in the finale, the helmet finally comes off. After being injured in an explosion, he needs medical attention from the IG-11. Manda refuses, not wanting to remove his helmet, that if taken off, he can never wear again. His friends leave into the sewer, and since IG-11 is not a living thing, he allows his helmet to be removed to save his life. Not only is this a huge moment for the fact that Din Djarin has a certain disdain for droids because of his past, but also since this is the first time he strays away from the Mandalorian code. Taking off his helmet is the literal and figurative representation of those two revelations. Moving to Season 2, a conflict arises between Bo-Katan's group and Din Djarin, since that group removes their masks freely. The design of Katan's helmet symbolizes the freedom and individuality that the other surviving group has for their community. Mando's own helmet remains the same. No painted details, no personal aesthetics. It's just a simple silver helmet. The final change to the Mandalorian armor is his jetpack. For most of the first season, Din Djarin is unable to obtain a jetpack due to the lack of Veskar his clan has. Returning to Navarro to release the place from Imperial occupation, he makes a visit to the underground covert where he began his journey. Most of the Mandalorian people were killed when they protected him, 
with only the one survivor that we know is alive being the armorer. She grants him a parting gift of a new jetpack, and since Mando is still recovering from his injury, he cannot use it yet. The crew continues down the lava river, but stormtroopers are waiting at the exit. IG-11 decides to make the sacrifice so that the child can live, and even the Mandalorian is sad about IG-11 having to die. Even with his past, the Mandalorian was beginning to accept the good droids that he might come across. Once again, his character further develops. As he grows, so does his equipment. With IG-11 gone and Moff Gideon on the pursuit with a TIE fighter, Mando jumps into action with his new jetpack and takes the villain down. As a piece of technology itself, the jetpack represents his newfound trust towards the sentient robots that are found throughout the galaxy. This is a big step for him because even though it's what killed his parents, he has to learn to move on and see that not everything is truly as bad as he thinks. The Mandalorian is a wonderful addition to the Star Wars universe, giving us a new look at the period after Return of the Jedi and before the sequel trilogy. It takes characters and inspiration from across the universe, blending them together to tell a different story than what we've seen before. Not only that, but the characters it focuses on grow and evolve as they face conflicts challenging to what they know and what they experience. Din Djarin is an interesting protagonist, and the, and the creators give us visual changes to help us understand the main character's growth. With halfway of season 2 complete, there's still a lot of plot that can mold our, the heroes and villains, which means this may not be the last that I talk about this. Well guys, that's gonna do it for the video. My last Vandalorian themed video didn't do so well, but with 20 plus new subscribers, I decided that I would give it another shot. Kahoot Games has been doing very good, so I felt like I'd take some time to make this video great. If you were entertained or informed, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We are one away from one stack of subscribers, and who knows, maybe we can reach 100 soon. That's all for now, and see you guys next time. Yeah, about that, that's not exactly all. So, remember how I mentioned Kahoot Games and how it was doing so well? Well, I don't really like that video. I mean, it does great, so I'm gonna keep it on my channel, but I can do better than that. So, Kahoot Games 2 is coming right to you on the Nico Town channel Thanksgiving this year.